This is chapter 4, and chapter 4 is dealing with atomic structure. So let's take a look at this. You should know that an atom is made up of a nucleus in the middle. The nucleus in the middle contains two uh, types of particles which we call subatomic particles. Any of the particles inside the atom are called subatomic particles. So which subatomic particles do we have in the nucleus? In the nucleus we have protons and neutrons. Um, revolving around the nucleus in energy levels are the electrons. So the electrons are going around in different energy levels or shells and the nucleus contains the protons and neutrons. And you should remember that the neutrons and protons are giving a mass of 1. So the mass of the proton is equal to the mass of the neutron and it is given a mass of 1. The electron is regarded as very negligible with respect to its mass because its mass is very very small. So the, you should know that the mass of the electron is 1 over 1840. That's actually a very very small number 0 0.0000 and lots of zeros. Okay so with respect to mass protons and neutrons are equal electrons are very very small in mass. The charges, remember that a neutron is neutral and that means that it doesn't have any charge. It's not plus, positive, it's not negative. So the neutron has a charge of zero and it is called or it is regarded as neutral. Protons have a charge of plus one, electron have, has a charge of minus one. So the protons are positively charged. The electrons are negatively charged. Remember that anything inside the nucleus is called nucleon. So the nucleon, actually these are words that are very, very similar, so please be familiar with them. Nucleon is anything inside the nucleus, so both protons and neutrons are nucleons. The neutron is the one that is neutral completely confused or is that okay? Anyway, as we go along it will be very easy. Atomic number and mass number. We have two numbers for each atom. The atomic number is the number of protons. Please remember the definition of atomic number is number of protons in the nucleus and this is unique for every element. Any element, its number of protons does not change. So an element may have a certain number of protons and this number never changes for that specific element. So the atomic number is unique. It is used to identify the element. The mass number is the number of protons and neutrons present in the nucleus. So the addition or the sum of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, this is called the mass number or it could be called the atomic mass, or it could be called the nucleon number, because remember we said nucleons are everything inside the nucleus. So protons and neutrons, the sum of that is the mass number or the nucleon number. So when you look at periodic table, every element has two numbers. Which one is the atomic number and which one is the mass number? Always remember that the atomic number is the smaller number. So for aluminium, I have 13 and 27. Which one is the atomic number? The atomic number is the 13. So this means that aluminium has 13 protons. That's the atomic number or the proton number. Now, 27 is the mass number. The larger number is the mass number. So 27 is actually the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus for aluminium. Okay? So let's take a look at this question. The diagram represents an atom of an element. What is the particle labeled X? He says X is the one that is positive inside the nucleus. Which one is positive inside the nucleus? Of course, it's the proton. Can you see that? X. So my answer is C. What is the mass number of this atom? How do we get mass number? Mass number is everything inside the nucleus. So add up how many balls there are inside the nucleus. So you have four positives and you have five neutrals. So four plus five, so the answer is nine. So that is C. So my answer is C. Okay. Then 
you will be asked to write electron configuration or electron distribution. Electron configuration is the distribution of electrons in an atom. Always remember that the electrons are evolving in energy levels around the atom. The first energy level can take only two. The next energy levels can take up to eight. So if I have aluminium, remember we said that the atomic number of aluminium is 13. Now the atomic number is the same as the number of electrons because the atom has not lost or gained electrons. So if I have an atomic number of 13, then this electron has how many electrons? It has 13. Now how are they distributed? The first energy level can take only two. So I put two in the first energy level. I still have some more electrons. I put them in the next. Now the next can take only up to eight. So I have eight. I still have some more. The rest of the 13, I put it in the next one. So the electron configuration for aluminum is two, eight, three. If he says write it, you just write two, comma, eight, comma, three. If he says draw the electron configuration, then you're supposed to draw these circles with the electrons as dots or as X's, whichever one you want. Okay, so that means, again, remember, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons is equal to the atomic number if the atom has not lost or gained any electrons. So how do I know number of protons from the atomic number? Remind me again, is the atomic number the small one or the big one? The atomic number is the smaller one. So the smaller number is the number of protons and it is also the number of electrons if the atom did not gain or lose any electrons. Number of neutrons, how do I get that? Remember that we said the mass number is the total, protons and neutrons. So if I subtract the number of protons, which is the atomic number, that should give me the number of neutrons. So to get the number of neutrons, it is the big number minus the small number. An atom may lose or gain electrons. If it loses electrons, if it's originally an atom, it has equal number of protons and electrons. And that means it has equal number of positives and negatives. So an atom originally is overall neutral. But if it loses or gains, first of all, what does it lose or gain? It loses or gains only electrons, not protons. So if it loses electrons, that means it has lost some of its negatives. That means now it has extra protons, that means it has extra positives, that means that it now becomes a positively charged ion and that is called a cation. Okay? What if it gains electrons? If it gains electrons, that means now it has extra negatives, so it will become overall a negatively charged ion and that is called an anion. So, let's try these. We have certain information and want to know number of neutrons, protons, electrons, and how do we distribute the electrons. So when you look at the periodic table, you find that fluorine, F fluorine, has two numbers, 9 and 19. And please do not be confused by which one is up and which one is down. It makes no difference which one is up and sometimes the smaller one is up, sometimes the bigger one is up, it doesn't make a difference. The difference is there is one of the numbers is small and the other is larger. So for fluorine, I have a small number 9 and a large number 19. How do I get number of neutrons? Remember that we said the 9 is the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons and is the same as the electrons in this case. The bigger number, which is 19, we said that is the mass number. So that is the number of what? Protons and neutrons. So... To get the number of neutrons, we said we subtract the two numbers. 19 minus 9, that makes 10 neutrons. Number of protons is the small number, 9. Number of electrons is also the small number because this is an atom that is neutral, no charge, no positives or negatives on it. Then the number of protons is equal to number of electrons. That means I have a total of 9 electrons. Now, how do we distribute 9 electrons? We said the first energy level takes 2. The second energy level will take the rest in this case, which is 7. Okay, what if I have the same F but with a minus on it? So that means that now I have a fluorine that has what? Gained or lost electrons? If it has an extra minus, that means it has an electron extra. 
extra electron. That means it has gained an electron. What is the number of neutrons? Remember that this is still f. The big number is still 19, the small number is still 9. So what is number of neutrons? We haven't done anything to the neutrons, so the number of neutrons is still the same. The number of protons is always the same, it never changes. Now how many electrons? Originally it should have 9 electrons, but this is with a minus, that means it has 1 extra electron, that means I have now 10 electrons. How do I distribute them? 2 in the first energy level and the rest in the next, so that is 2 neutrons. Okay, what if I have aluminium? We said aluminium has a small number 13 and a big number 27. How do we get number of neutrons? From the difference. 27 minus 13. Now, what is the number of protons? It's a smaller number. What is number of electrons? Well, this is aluminium, no positive, no negative on it. That means number of electrons is the same as number of protons. How do we distribute 13 electrons? I have two in the first energy level. The second energy level can take only 8, I still have the rest and that's 3. What if I have aluminium 3 plus? What does the 3 plus mean? The 3 plus means I have 3 extra protons and that means I have lost 3 of my electrons, right? So if I have a positive, that means I've lost electrons. 3 positives means we've lost 3 electrons. But the atomic number is the same and the mass number is the same. And that means number of neutrons still the same. Number of protons still the same and the only thing that has changed is number of electrons. Now this has lost three electrons so now I have ten and they are distributed three. Okay. Isotopes. What are isotopes? Isotopes are atoms of the same element having the same number of protons different number of neutrons. That means they will have the same proton number or same atomic number different number. So first of all they have to be atoms of the same element. So all of them are hydrogens, or all of them are oxygens, or all of them are uranium, whatever. They have to be atoms of the same element. Atoms of the same element means they have the same number of protons. If it's hydrogen, it has one proton. It cannot change. Uh, same number of electrons, but different number of what? different number of neutrons because it has different mass numbers. So for hydrogen, for example, I have three types of hydrogen atoms. I have a hydrogen atom that has a mass number of one, a hydrogen atom that has a mass number of two, and another type of hydrogen atom that has a mass number of three. All of these have the same number of protons because they all have atomic number one, so all of them have one proton. Same number of electrons, but because the mass number is different, then they have different number of neutrons. Remember that an element of hydrogen with mass number one is the only atom that has no neutrons in its nucleus. So it has only what in its nucleus? It has only protons, no neutrons. All other atoms of all other elements will have some neutrons in its nucleus. So the other type of hydrogen with a mass number of two that means 2 minus 1, that means 1 neutron. The other one has a mass number of 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2 neutrons. So these are called isotopes of hydrogen. So which of the following represents a pair of isotopes? Okay, let's take a look. What was definition of isotopes? Isotopes was atoms of the same element. So that means A is wrong. Because A is talking about carbon and nitrogen. These are different elements, so they can't be isotopes. What about B? We said atoms of the same element, okay, sulfur and sulfur, same atomic number, but different what? Different mass number, not different charges. Not one of them has no charge and the other two minus. No, they have to have different mass numbers. What about C? C shows O2 and O3. These are two different types of molecules. So there are two different types of elements, two different types of um, substances. O2 is oxygen, O3 is something called ozone. So these are two different substances, they're not isotopes. What about D? D is talking about lead and lead, Pb and Pb, so both of them are lead. So that's atoms of the same element. Same atomic number, both of them have atomic number 82. <clears throat> but different mass number, and that means that is my answer. Do we understand this? 
Hydrogen has three isotopes. State in terms of subatomic particles, one way in which these isotopes are the same and one way in which they are different. So if I have hydrogen isotopes, they, are the, they have the same what? They have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass is defined as average of the mass number of the different isotopes in the ratio of their occurrence in nature relative to the mass of an atom of carbon-12. What does that mean? First of all, it's the average of the mass numbers of the different isotopes. That means, if I'm talking, for example, about chlorine. If you look at the periodic table, chlorine has a mass number of 35.5. Where did we get the 0.5 from? We said the mass number is supposed to be the total number of protons and neutrons. You can't have half a proton or half a neutron. But this is because this is the average. The average of what? It's the average of the mass numbers of the different isotopes. That means I have different types of chlorine atoms with different mass number and I'm taking the average. Average according to what? according to their occurrence in nature, because different isotopes do not occur to the same extent. Um, isotopes of chlorine, for example, some of them have mass number 35, some of them have mass number uh, 37. Uh, they're not 50-50, they're not half of them, no. Some of them will have uh, a bigger occurrence in nature than the other. So the average of the mass number of the different isotopes in the ratio of their occurrence in nature and all the mass numbers that we have are done relative to the mass of an atom of carbon-12. They decided that they're going to use an atom of carbon that has mass number 12 as reference for all the masses. So then all the mass numbers are relative to the mass of an atom of carbon-12. So we said chlorine has two main isotopes. There is a chlorine atom with mass number 35, and there is another type of chlorine atom with mass number 37. Now, 75% of chlorine atoms have a mass of 35, while only 25% of chlorine atoms have 37 as a mass number. And we're trying to calculate the relative atomic mass. Now, the relative atomic mass would be the mass of each one times its occurrence plus the mass of the other one times its occurrence. So 35 times 75 plus 37 times 25 over 100, that should give me the relative atomic mass, and that comes out with the 35.5 that we see in the periodic table. Are we okay? So let's try this. The table shows percentage composition by mass of a sample of silicon. So he says I have three isotopes of silicon, one of them has mass number 28, the other mass number 29, and the third has mass number of 30, and this is the percent occurrences of each isotope. Calculate the relative atomic mass of this sample of silicon. Give your answer to one decimal place. This is very important. Many students forget this. He says calculate the relative atomic mass and your final answer should have only one decimal place. So how do we calculate it? We said the mass number times the occurrence plus the mass number times the occurrence plus the mass number times the occurrence all over 100 because this is percentage. Now, from the calculator, this comes out to be 28.109, but he doesn't want that. He wants one decimal place, so your final answer must be 28.1. If you leave it 28.109 and that's it, you lose a mark. So you have to give him the answer to the same number of decimal places or the same number of significant figures that he's asking for. Okay, so this is the end of this chapter. And please go and do the questions and uh, try them before going on to check the answers.